Namaskar. A very warm welcome to all teachers present for the session. Today's module will be including the effective and responsive teaching of history in a classroom situation. Teach the children, not the subject, as facts will soon be outdated. This reminds us of the scope of a subject. For us, history has local to national and international levels. When an academic subject is included in the curriculum, it, its aim is to see what objectives it best fulfills. For us, the study of history develops the personality of a child, grooms him as a, a future leader and an aware citizen. Besides, values like ethical, constitutional, moral values are also imbibed through the study of history. A very popular saying, poetry paints what history describes, which means a teacher in a classroom situation not only will have a well-framed or well-designed lesson plan, but also a pedagogical plan. A pedagogy is the art or science of teaching a particular subject. Let us see what sort of competencies does history or the learning of history offer. The different competencies that we can learn from the study of history. First, social pedagogy that helps the child to learn the values that will help him to be a, a responsible citizen in future. The next is the critical pedagogy that helps the child to be motivated and confident in all walks of life or in the day-to-day -day situation. Third, the culturally responsive pedagogy that helps a child to identify the diversities in a classroom situation, the different language, culture or religion of other students, how to respect them, value them and be tolerant towards them. And next, the Socratic pedagogy that helps to infuse inquisitiveness in a child such that he can learn beyond the textbook. It makes the child more aware of his time and beyond. Now let us see how best we can use this pedagogy in our daily life or in the student's learning experience. First, when we teach a subject in a classroom situation, we need to go and integrate the subject with other subject. That is the integration or interdisciplinary way of teaching a subject as well as the cross-curricular linkage. Let us take a look at this to understand it better. It helps the child not only to develop interest for that particular subject but to relate it with other subjects as well. Like take the example of Tamil Nadu as shown in this uh, board. Tamil Nadu in the 9th century, the historical aspects will be taught in the history class, its political situation, the rulers, economic prosperity, the challenges or the reasons what made the Cholas one of the greatest dynasties. This Chola empire, the location of it, the climatic conditions, the soil, whether it supported vegetation or not, helps us to understand the geographical aspects. At the same time, the subject can be well integrated with English. Suppose the child is asked to make a brochure. He will have his excitement into it that what are the places that we can cover when we visit the place, what are the uh, places of interest, the culinary, the textile or any other thing that was unique in those days and are not present here and something which is present in Tamil Nadu today but maybe not there in the time when Cholas had been ruling. Thus, history joined hands with geography and English to make it a cross-curricular subject. Besides the cross-curricular or interdisciplinary way of teaching a subject, competencies otherwise that are developed or groomed in a classroom situation is to check whether a child after the study of this subject of history has got nurtured with the knowledge of the subject and collaborative approach, critical thinking, problem solving capacity 
and values that one needs to be to become a responsible citizen for tomorrow. Pedagogical competencies can also be realized with reference to Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives. Let us see what uh, the taxonomy had been structured to create, apply, evaluate, analyze, understand and the remembering skills of a child. How much history has been able to do with it can also be realized when we see the different domains of teaching being covered through the teaching or study of history. The study of history covers all the domains that education requires. Say the cognitive domain, the affective domain and the conative or psychomotor domain. But these can only be realized or materialized when proper or well-planned activities have been included in the day's lesson plan. See what are the different activities that can help us realize these different skills or domains of teaching. According to Gandhiji, our brain must be educated through hands. Thus, the child can learn best when hands are in action. Let's see how we can better do it. The slide shows us different activities can be included from making of artifacts, toys, jewellery, wallpaper making, comic strip, a bulletin board. Hands on learning makes classes interesting. The child gets involved and learns the subject or gets interest in learning the subject. This also helps in developing the cognitive skill of a child. The learning of history goes with dynasties, kings and happenings which sometimes becomes very difficult for children to remember. But if we put them in a different or a designed way, then it makes the learning easier and exciting. Let's see how better can we remember genealogy. Because when there are too many names or too many dynasties together we study, a, a family tree, a mind map, an album or diary which also goes with the art integration work again helping a child to develop the psychomotor skills. The next set of activities knowing the character by being the character. This role play is one of the most effective ways of learning or helping the child to learn the person or the personality they are trying to be and enact. This can also be done in different ways like a monologue, a skit or a proper drama that can be staged. Too many data sometimes may be a little confusing for a student. Let us make it a little more easier for them when we can help them do it in a chronology or sequence. This can be best done when we frame particular activities for them like framing a timeline or telling a story and then asking them to put the kings in or the monarchs in order or give them a complex execute with numbering and now the child will recall and number the monarchs. This way uh, the remembering in sequence or chronology will be possible. The next set of activities is very effective in contemporary times. The digital world has offered us a different set of devices to reach out to our children in a more effective way, like a podcast, which has voices recorded in it. In a classroom situation, when we play them, a child gets more interested in learning and can relate it much better. Take the concept or take it a PPT presentation which also helps the child to visualize and can help them remember things better. A film can be an effective way of reaching out to a student. It helps them sensitize and grow their emotions and make them more self-aware. They can visualize the time and thus they can learn or understand the subject better which helps them to recall in the long run.
Contemporary times also tell us or reminds us of another system known as blogging. Blogging has been very effective in recent times because it helps to show the intricate details of a particular architecture, time, a climatic situation, society in detail which helps the child to understand a concept which may not be otherwise very clear through the textual learning. Community based learning is also a new approach. This has helped children relate the ideas or the concepts, the values they have learned through their subject. If the teacher can motivate the child to go for programs like each one teach one or citizen awakening, they can relate it much better. In fact, enthusiasm of students are seen notably more in such campaigns or programs as they can relate it with their daily life understandings. A teacher who is equipped with a well-framed lesson plan, a pedagogical plan and well-sorted activities for the subject will be able to develop interest as well as an understanding for the subject. Not only that, it is the teacher's role to create an interest for the subject such that the child is eager to know beyond the textbook. Other than going through activities to make them understand the lesson better, we can also think of multiple assessments that will also help them draw attention in class and learn the lessons in an interesting manner. What can be the different sort of multiple assessments to judge the learning process of a student? It can be the pen and paper test, it can be quizzing, it can be carousal brainstorming where we randomly ask questions to see the power of recall for a child and understanding as well as new ideas like entry exit cards, the flash cards and peer and self assessments. This helps the child to motivate and be confident in his learning. Key verbs or power verbs are very important to help a child understand the subject better. For every subject, they are different. Hence, let us check how can we increase the interest of a child with the use of power verbs like critical, situational, conceptualization, reasoning and interpretation. Pictures or paintings in history has been always a matter of interest because a visual aid can help create a permanent impact in a child's mind. For history, we have not only pictures and paintings but other than that cartoon interpretations. Now teachers, let us see how we can make a comparative study, traditional one and the new or NEP based education or the teaching of history. Earlier it was a teacher centric one, These, the present is a student centric one. Earlier it had been a chalk and talk method based on lecture and presently it has been interactive and a collaborative approach. Next, it was basically a pen and paper test along with which could be, uh, you know, taken at intervals like formative and summative assessments. Presently, we have multiple ways of assessing a child where the child can be better understood and judged. Next, we have skills that we focused earlier were basically remembering, explaining and understanding. But today, the approaches are more. They are critical collaborative, problem solving, the values that they are learning as well as the holistic development of a child that happens through the study of history. So teachers, as we come to the end of the day's session, let us recall the expected learning outcomes. It helps the child to have a collaborative approach, helps in critical thinking, makes them more responsible and confident as future citizen. The values learned like nationalism, honesty, truthfulness, commitment are better nurtured through the study of history. 
it helps in uh, inclusive to create an inclusive environment where children can have better reflective thoughts and overall it helps the child to be more sympathetic the power of reasoning enhances for the child and his inquisitive self to know and learn beyond the textbook is also developed key competencies are nurtured through the study of history and we develop a better leader for tomorrow thus in the words of tagore don't limit the child to your knowledge for he was born in a different time thank you